If you like the content that we're pushing out, please like, share, and of course subscribe. And let us know in the comments what you think about our videos. Like, why would you watch it and not tell us what's going on? And I hope to see you later on. Peace out. Alright, welcome to another video you guys. And uh, today I wanted to do something a little cool. Now, I don't know if you guys are going to like it because it might trigger some people. And remember, if I say anything in regards to my opinion, it is only my opinion and I'm not stating it as a fact. And if you feel differently, let me know in the comments because the whole point of this channel was to kind of see how you guys feel out there in the world of YouTube and the internet. And uh, if you want more people to chime in on this discussion, share the video, drop a like and all that good stuff. And of course, subscribe. And without further ado, let's get into it. Now, this little comic book slash manga, well, versus manga debate is more or less just kind of to see how you guys feel about the whole American comic books versus, you know, manga, anime and all that stuff and see what you feel about it. Now, while some people may see as like these two separate entities between Japan's manga and American comic books, there are very distinct differences between like the two artworks, very obviously from one another, as you can see where we have like in Japan mangas, like, you know, chibi art and stuff like that. And for the most part, American comic books are drawn for the most part, pretty similar, even though there are very slightly different art styles. Now, I'm not going to say which one is really better per se. But I'm just letting you know my opinion in terms of how I feel about them both because I do enjoy anime as well as American comics overall and American cartoons when it comes to comic books and all that stuff. One thing that you notice about Japan's manga heroes or even in their stories and a lot of their anime is a lot of the time we actually grow with the heroes where usually the pilot episode, the hero or the main character, whichever the case, we kind of see them start from the absolute bottom, from the zero on the 100 scale where they're pretty much nobody or they're weak or they're ins insignificant for the most part. Nothing really amazing about them, cool and dandy. Now, eventually, probably by like the second or third season, we start to see them progress. They're totally different or at least different enough to the point that we notice like they're getting stronger or that their characters change or there's a lot more character development because that is the basis and premise of a lot of manga and anime throughout all of Japan. It's all about character development. And it's all about people getting in their feelings. They want you to get attached to those characters because ultimately that is what's going to make their franchise last if people really enjoy the franchise. Now one thing we can openly say I guess about manga slash anime is that usually when the character gets stronger they usually stay stronger like everyone knows that Naruto is by far my favorite anime and I'm not really digging Boruto right now because they're still feeding off a lot of the same concepts of Naruto and a lot of the characters just basically spin-off versions or minor different versions of the originals that we've grown to love over the years and we're not going to get too deep into that because that's a whole other video but we actually get a chance to grow up with the characters see how they progressed and how much stronger they got over the course of 10 years in naruto we've actually seen naruto even though he was still strictly overpowered because in episode one he just dished out a thousand clones but whatever even though we've seen naruto start off from the bottom of the totem pole didn't really have any skills or any real abilities when it came to combat as we got through the series he was the hero along with sasuke for the fourth great ninja war and he was the most powerful well one of the most powerful shinobi on the planet and even sasuke admitted without the tailed beast he would not be able to beat naruto because he was just too powerful at that point and even going into baruto he and sasuke are the top two ninja shinobi in the whole world and we saw them grow and we progressed with them which is why we kind of feel this attachment towards them now, when it comes to American comic books, you can't really say the same, mostly because when comic book characters usually get a big power up, like when Hal Jordan became the Parallax entity, well, when he was con kind of consumed or overtaken by the Parallax entity, he gained a major power up, but that really didn't stick into comics because eventually, you know, he died, became the Spectre and all that other stuff. He just a bunch of messy messiness, but he did not maintain that power and it's something that does not stay usually for characters. But what I can say about overall American comic books is we have legitimately more powerful heroes where, or for Marvel Comics, for example, we have full-blown reality warpers like Franklin Richard, Mad Jim Jasper, The Molecule Man, even the Marquis of Death, and he's very obscure, so, our, so I wouldn't really expect you to know who he is, but we have people who can literally warp reality on a universal scale where we have mutants who can affect change on a planetary level pretty casually where we have you know mega loving mutants and stuff like that that's another video if you're not really sure what that means you can kind of i guess google it but we have characters who can literally do massive amounts of damage and it's not even their full power so to speak and 
that's what I guess is a little different about anime and comic book characters where American comic books are a little bit of a reflection of how America feels in terms of how they think they look to everybody else. Well, America sees themselves as this big superpower country where it's like all these heroes are crazy powerful. We have the Blue Marvel from um, Marvel Comics as well. And he is just a force of nature. Like he is no joke. We have Ghost Rider. We have the Hulk who literally has infinite strength and a ridiculous healing factor. We have Wolverine where physically he's not the most powerful, but his healing factor, depending on who's writing his story, has been ridiculously OP. Even Deadpool and Thanos and like I said, in DC Comics, you have people like um, Mixel Pitalik. You have Trigon. All these people can warp reality even when you have a white lantern they can warp reality bring people back from the dead american comics have always been over the top when it came to sheer power but in terms of actual character development i think manga and anime has it because they actually take the time to let you get attached to the characters and then you actually grow with the characters and then once they actually achieve a certain amount of power it's theirs to keep because over the years it's kind of been what we've been building to. Now, like I said, I always use Naruto as a comparison, but it took them 10 years for them to physically reveal Madara as a villain. And it was one of the best buildups ever because when I first started getting into Naruto, I was in middle school, pretty much. I was in like sixth or seventh grade, and then I was watching Naruto faithfully with the subs and all that. And then, like I said, Madara didn't reveal himself till like maybe my senior year of high school, first semester of college, that was like 2012. That's a long time for a buildup. But anyways, I think mostly American comics are really good for people who are into really good fights and really powerful characters. But ultimately, manga and anime are very good for building up characters and building them up and really getting you on that moral stance where there isn't shades of gray like American comics, at least not recently, where a lot of the characters, even the superheroes, you might confuse them with villains or some of the villains might seem like good guys. But in manga, it's usually pretty black and white. You know who the heroes are and you know who the villains are. And occasionally there might be some shades of gray or where people are a little misguided, but ultimately you know who to root for. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And I hope to see you in the next one. Peace out.